of you have voted anyway, which is our right. And, uh, of course, I know you voted right ever how you voted. I know that was the right way anyway. So <laughs> at this time, I'll call on uh, Mayor Pro Dem Buddy Fowler to lead us in a word of prayer. Thank you, Mayor. Let's bow our heads. Our Father, we come to you tonight and ask you to be with those tornado victims in Tennessee, Father. Help them through their trying times. Father, we also ask you to be with our troops that are overseas. Bring them home safely. Be with those that are here in the, in the states. Help them serve thy country and bring them safely home to their families, Father. We also ask you to be with us as we make our decisions tonight. And be with us as we go their way. We ask this in your most precious name. Amen. 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 And ask Amen. Councilman Don Ham that he'll lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag. be seated. All right. And the next most important thing besides voting is registering. Uh, the census is right around the corner, and so we've got to make sure each and every person registers for the census. We want them counted because they weren't before, but at this time we've got uh, a gentleman that's going to tell you all about it and is going to convince you and put you to where you can convince all your neighbors. Thank you, Mayor. It's Glenn yes. Target, and I have the privilege to be here in front of you this evening as a result of the Jacksonville Onslow Complete Count Committee. We're very honored that your Stephanie Hobbs is a part of that committee and she's been a valuable member of the strategic development of our plans to make sure everyone gets counted. You know, the, um, it's only 28 days before Census Day, April 1st is Census Day. And of course, what I, we have a perspective obviously that looks at the Onslow part of this as it was because that's where we're from. But you know, 22,000 people were not counted in Onslow County in the 2010 Census. Um, Jacksonville was the 10th most populous city in the state up until that point and dropped to 14th as a result of these people not having been counted as it was. And of course the state lost a chance of having a congressional district to this part. Now the Surf City population on July 1st, adjusted from the census date of April 1st, was 1,853. The projection by North Carolina is that your um, population is 2,174, which would be a 17% increase. And according to the American Community Survey, your numbers should likely be around 3,264. But remember that some of you might be old enough to remember in the days when you, some people got the long form census and some got the short form census. Well, now the census is all short form. And the American Community Survey takes over with the long form, but doing annually surveying, much like that we've been able to do so much scientifically now of estimating what people's population is and th demographics. They do just a sample every year of a constant number of people. You have a one out of 450 chance of being of getting a piece of mail asking you to participate in the Census um, American Community Survey. And so what we know is, is that's what probably is here, but whether someone counts in the census is an empirical number. If they are not counted by the census taker, they don't exist. And in the case of Jacksonville, our 70,245 population, we've had to live with since 2010, even though the state demographer, thank goodness, adjusted for revenue purposes of the state. Your median age is 39.1, and that's estimated to actually go down a bit in the next census. Onslow County lost $402 million over the decade because of the 22,000 people that were not counted because it's estimated that each person in Onslow County and in North Carolina actually is, would bring to the state $1,623 worth of federal funds and $205 worth of state funds. So doing the math, 22,000 times that number times 10 years is the $402 million. People use the census to help tell the story of the community, what's here, that 39.1 median age comes from that. Businesses use it to determine how, where to locate, what's growing, what's not. Local governments use it for planning purposes and emergency operations. And now this responding to the census 
will be even easier than ever before because you can do it online. In, in this area, most everyone will receive a census invitation, and you can do it by phone should you wish to do so. And if you want to fill it out a paper, you ask them for it, they'll send you a paper copy too. And of course, given the election that you spoke of today, sir, one of the most significant parts of the census is reapportionment. That's what Congress actually wanted to know with the county, so the House of Representatives would be equally represented, one person, one vote by representatives there as it was. Your information's secure. It's, um, you know, it's gonna be, um, you're gonna do it over the line. They've tested, tested, and tested, and of course nothing's perfect, but we all believe that they've done an adequate job. It's confidential for 72 years, and should any census person, taker or otherwise, they take a lifetime oath, even though they may work for the census temporarily, they can't release any personal information or suffer the federal consequences of that. And it's confidential for 72 years because people do like to look at what their great-grandparents might want recorded in the census and genealogy as it was there. Now, we mentioned that it's also our civic duty. As you recall there, it's, it's actually in the Constitution under Article I, Section 2. And looking at that, that loss of funding that we had in our area, uh, the potential 2020 effects make things look even more so. North Carolina is showing currently a 10% growth, and it boosts the ranking of North Carolina so much so that they believe they'll get the 14th seat this time. Our 14th seat last time went to South Carolina. Um, Onslow County is expected to top over 200,000 in the, in the 2010 census, and of course there'll be some significant redistricting that will occur as a result of it. There's 10 days now before you actually start getting in the mail your census letter. It's gonna actually to, re to actually reach out and go online and go ahead and fill it out and we wish everyone would do it as soon as possible. At a meeting that Stephanie's gonna be at on Thursday, she's gonna see how members of the committee will be able to see how the returns are coming in. Who's actually filling out the forms in aggregate um, from what areas and what census tracts are at and where we can see where we have to do some more work in there as it was. I mentioned that Onslow County's response rate was only 64% in 2000, 74% in 2010. Pender County's rate was 56%, but it did make it to 78% and beat out Onslow County for the points there. Surf City's rate was 22% in 2000 and 75% in the most recent um, estimate of that as it was. There's still time to come and help the census if you want to. There are still 1,500 jobs left out of the Greenville office that include Onslow and Pender County. The starting pay is $15.50, and if you have management capability, they want you to help lead teams and do things such as that. And if you're interested in it, you can just go to 2020census.gov jobs. And of course, um, we are also getting ready to have a bit of a rally on the Onslow County Courthouse steps on Monday um, in which we were hoping that um, our local officials would come out and challenge other local officials about getting that response rate up and so we can have a little friendly competition about trying to increase that. Thank you for letting me speak to you this evening. If you have any questions and want more information, um, you can just go to census.gov. You can go to 2020census.gov and get a, a, just a huge amount of information as it was there. And if you all have any questions, I'll be happy to try to field them. Anybody got any questions for him? <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Um, We've heard this a lot, to be candid with you, that they're behind on responding to the ones they have. But I'll tell you today, the Greenville office called our office. We're going to give them some space for training, and they are, they're starting that in earnest because they've got 10 days from us um, for training. So I would expect a call soon. Thank you. Well, I would like to say that Stephanie got us into a uh, challenge war here. And uh, so I did a, vi a video that should be coming out in one this coming week, tomorrow, challenging the Holly Ridge mayor. Oh, that's great. And the Holly Ridge mayor is supposed to challenge the Topsail Beach mayor, <laughs> and the Topsail Beach mayor is to challenge North Topsail Beach mayor. So 
so we can get all four towns challenged. That is fantastic. To try to keep them going. That's fantastic. Well, this is good news. But we appreciate you coming. Sure Absolutely. Thank you for hearing Thank us Thank you out. for your work, too. Okay. Have we got uh, James or Mary Turner here by any chance? They were out of town. They'll be back in two weeks, I think. Oh, okay. And uh, what about, uh, I hadn't seen anybody from war. Oh, yeah, that's right. I, I just <laughs> talked to you, yeah. Uh, from Ward Realty. All right, come on up here, girl. I don't know why I was just <laughs> looking for David. I right? by yourself. But uh, anyway, uh, Ward Realty, everybody knows where it is. They got a brand-new building almost over here on the corner. But they did build it before the hurricane and had no damage, I don't think, at all. So they, they did a good job building it. Of course, Ward's always done a good job building anyway and uh, they were any of you that don't know they were uh, like the original uh, developers one of them were Yao and War, uh, Ward was original developers here in Surf City and so they've been around a long time too uh, so we've known them a long time but anyway they are the business of the month and so I'm gonna present this to you and I appreciate the work that y'all do sure do Thank you. And the other one was the home of the month, which was uh, James and Mary Turner at 107 Bland Drive. So they're going to be out until when? Wednesday night. Okay. So will they, when are we going over there? Thursday at 1 p.m. is beautification picture. Okay. So then maybe they'll be back home. They will. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, at this time, I'll read my remarks. We're asked that all attendants please set the cell phones to silent or vibrate mode. The council offers a public an opportunity to speak during the meeting. Comments should be limited to three minutes each and must be directly issue-oriented with agenda items for this meeting or an issue upon which the council has control. Citizen speakers will be acknowledged in the order in which they signed up to speak and will address all comments to the board as a whole, not one individual council member. Speakers will address the council from the speaker's podium right over here at the front of the room and will begin their remarks by stating their name and address. Discussion between speakers and members of the audience will not be allowed. Public comment is intended to require the council to address any impromptu questions Speakers are expected to be civil in their language and presentation. Any comments where the per, uh, primary purpose is to promote business or candidacy shall not be allowed. Uh, I feel like I'm sort of preaching to the choir because I think I, every one of you could probably repeat this thing yourself. <laughs> You've heard it so much. But anyway, uh, that gives you the information. In accordance with the council's adopted rules and procedure, Council members shall reserve responses, if any, for the council form on the agenda. So if the council wants to answer some of your questions, they'll just answer them when their turn comes up. Okay, adoption of agenda. Uh, all right, at this time, with no other items being considered separately, a motion to adopt the meeting agenda is in order. I make a motion we approve it and adopt it. Okay. And Jeremy seconded. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. All right, uh, so do we have a vote on the consent agenda? Holden. That was on the whole agenda. So, I, okay. I make a motion right. we approve it. And a I second. second. Okay, all in favor, aye. 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 All right, <coughs> now, that didn't take long, so now it's time for public comment. at 204B North Boca Bay Lane. My name is Kathleen Sumner. I live at 204 North Boca Bay Lane on Island. 
I have four items I'd like the council to consider or address. I've been trying since Florence to get poop bags for the dogs on Beach Access 6 to no avail. I would like some help from the council. I would also like the council to consider or help me apply uh, for a crossing, uh, for a pedestrian crossing at Pender at Tiffany's because it's very, very dangerous. And we're going to have a lot more houses because they've built on South Boca Bay and we're going to have someone get killed or hurt and it's not going to be a pretty scene. The other thing um, I'd like some help from the council on is the road that has been re-asphalted on Pender, North Shore, and North Topsail. The asphalt job is horrifically horrible. There are lumps of asphalt. Um, it's already breaking apart at the side, and I uh, would hope that the council at least goes out and inspects it and gets the person who installed that asphalt to correct it because it's a mess. And finally, I would ask the, c the council to please help and uh, help us understand the rules and the responsibilities for the adopt a beach access because all we see is a bucket and a sign promoting whoever paid the money to have the bucket and the sign there. We've never seen anyone pick up anything and it's, it, I thought that the Adopt a beach would require someone to actually go out and clean up the beach maybe once a month. I don't know what the rules are, so if Dwight, you could help me understand the rules, I would love a copy of that. That's all. Thank you very much. Quickly, I'm sorry. Uh, what the pedestrian crossing? What what at, what was that access? It would be at, at Pender Avenue and New River. It's dangerous because right down the road is right the trailer yeah. bar. Okay. okay, got it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right, Thank thanks. you. Okay. That's all we have for this evening. That's the only one we got signed up. Okay, thank you, ma'am. All right, we're going to turn it over to the manager at this point, and then you can go right on into the new business at the okay. same time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we've got quite a bit on the uh, manager's update, as there's quite a bit going on. Um, obviously, it, it continues to be a pleasure to serve council and the citizens uh, of Surf City. Uh, thank you for the comments, and, and I've taken note of those, and, and we'll try to work on those. I appreciate that. Uh, as you know, you got a budget workshop scheduled for March 20th. Uh, that will be an all-day uh, affair. Uh, the finance director and I are working on the agenda. Um, that's going to include a current fiscal year overview, uh, as well as an overview of other funds and debt service. Uh, the planning board has been invited to join us for lunch, as we will have a presentation on the comprehensive planning efforts and approach um, as it anticipated land use plan update to be undertaken next year. Following lunch, we'll begin talking about the upcoming fiscal year to include major expenses uh, and rolling into the capital improvement plan and specific capital improvement budgets for upcoming projects. Uh, on Thursday, we do have a water and wastewater planning workshop uh, down at the New Hanover County Arboretum. On Wednesday, we have the Eastern North Carolina Recovery and Resilience Meeting in Onslow County. Um, the streets project was completed as of today. Uh, we will make sure that, that those things are looked at. Um, beach nourishment, uh, the federal project, I'll start with that. The, uh, we continue to wait on uh, meeting rescheduling. As council knows, Army Corps canceled our meeting that was to be held last Friday. Uh, this meeting was uh, mainly in regards to the real estate process uh, of this project. I am pleased to announce that staff has completed the developed and undeveloped uh, property spreadsheet. Uh, this is a major milestone for us as this determines what cost share, federal cost share and local cost share represents for the uh, project. Um, this template was provided in North Topsail Beach to continue our project partnership so that they can do their part uh, for their town. Uh, we are scheduled to have a beach nourishment and hurricane preparedness meeting April 18th. Uh, we have met to discuss this. If we don't hear anything from the Corps in a timely manner, uh, this meeting will be postponed uh, to May so that staff can have a full understanding of the project moving forward. Uh, we want to be able to answer as many questions as possible for the citizenry. And 
uh, without our communication, direct communication with the core, that, that makes it difficult. But uh, we'll try to keep everybody abreast as a, to that. Um, as you know, we also have a hurricane preparedness uh, portion of that workshop, um, which Hurricane Preparedness Month is in May. Uh, the FEMA berm project, uh, phase two is underway. Contractors are working around and, and north of the pier. Uh, following that, they'll continue with areas 9, 10, and 11. Uh, construction access for the northern section will be from Pender Avenue. Um, access number six will remain closed until the project is complete. Uh, we do have some inclination that uh, the issues on uh, Pender Ave uh, came from the equipment drop uh, for the uh, sand hall project. So again, we'll, we'll coordinate that and, and try to get that uh, repaired. Um, staff conducted analysis on public beach accesses um, as this has been a, a, a major topic um, and issue trying to deal with this. Um, overall, majority of the accesses will need some sort of treatment, uh, mainly limited to the sand adjustments where the crossovers meet the berm and the application of temporary measures to as assist in pedestrian navigation. Uh, at this time, we feel that a, a modified Hatteras ramp model will be used to assist in the stabilization. Uh, additional work will need to be completed to keep folks off the other areas of the berm so that they don't navigate sideways on that, um, that sand and consideration of roping for assistance may be pursued. Uh, maintenance staff will be working on this project. Uh, requested prototypes from citizens were sent into Division of Coastal Management staff. Um, as soon as we hear back uh, from those approved uh, prototypes, we will uh, then send that back out to our citizens so that they can have some direction moving forward on that. Uh, late Friday or midday Friday, we were notified of a Division of Water Resources Coastal Storm Damage Mitigation Fund um, that we presents an opportunity for potential grants. Uh, the state has set aside $11.5 million for uh, coastal uh, communities to apply for. Um, it certainly will be our intention to apply for this funding. Um, I've been in contact with uh, manager of that grant program and uh, I've got a couple of questions that I'm trying to get answered for that in, in regards to the FEMA project. Um, so we'll keep keep everybody abreast of that. The grant applications are due April 30th, 2020 um, and there is a limit of two and a half million per jurisdiction um, award. So uh, 11 and a half million total pot, two and a half million per jurisdiction. Uh, we don't anticipate a full award amount on that, but uh, we will get a, a competitive application in. Uh, sir? Uh, this is the uh, Division of Water Resources, or DWR, Coastal Storm Damage Mitigation Fund. And this was released on Friday. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Oceanside Structure Addressing, uh, our Community Development Department staff, uh, we will begin assessments on oceanfront structures beginning in mid-March. Um, to ensure ordinance compliance. This is in reference to uh, ordinance 5-18-6 uh, and through subsequent storms since a nor'easter in 2015, we've uh, lost quite a few uh, structure addresses on the ocean side. Uh, letters will be sent out uh, as a uh, sort of a, just a, a nice letter that says, hey, this is in our ordinance and please get it uh, addressed within 30 days, it's, it's their goal to have this um, hopefully shored up by Memorial Day in, in May. Uh, I'd be remiss if, if I did not uh, bring up the coronavirus or COVID-19 um, as this has uh, an impact or potential impact for uh, government operations. Uh, we participated in a conference call yesterday with Pender Emergency Management and the Health Department uh, the Pender County Health Department serves as the lead agency on this. Um, each, they, they sort of uh, push local governments to uh, not put anything out that uh, comes from just the town of Surf City or the town of Topsail Beach. Uh, ultimately, uh, directive is coming from the CDC uh, as well as the state. So uh, if, if there's any questions on that, you should direct yourself or direct somebody who asks questions about it to the health department website uh, or the CDC's website. Uh, information was sent out to schools last Friday. 
Um, and then also uh, town staff did send out, HR uh, sent out an email to all town employees uh, with CDC information um, so that uh, we can get it on folks' minds. Um, Mr. Horn, uh, our emergency management coordinator, is working with uh, police department, I believe fire department, uh, as well as the county EM, just to, to have some uh, communication. Um, I've highlighted in here, wash your hands. Um, I know it's a simple thing, but it's something that we all should exercise. Um, but that's, that's sort of my report on, on the coronavirus issue. Uh, lastly, um, just wanted to give you an update. Um, you did approve the MOU with Holly Ridge on your consent agenda. Um, we have not published uh, the opportunity with Holly Ridge uh, until this has occurred, but uh, summer camp registration for the Surf City section uh, went live this week. Uh, within four hours, we had 85 kids already on the wait list uh, for this summer camp program. Um, so following the evening, we'll be reaching out to those uh, that were waitlisted to offer them participation uh, in the Surf City Holly Ridge uh, summer camp. Uh, as you know, everything will be managed through Surf City and, and we'll be able to replicate the success that we've had, hopefully, uh, with Holly Ridge. Uh, with that concludes my report, Mr. Mayor. Uh, happy to entertain any questions. Anybody got any questions? Okay, you want to go ahead and present the uh, amendment section 12-4? Yes, sir, and I, I most likely am going to defer to uh, Chief, Chief Wilson okay. as this is his uh, area of expertise. You discussed this in uh, your uh, workshop um, a couple of weeks ago, right. and, and there were some concerns on uh, the commercial burning application side of it, but uh, Chief Wilson will present uh, the parking and fire excessive fire alarm section of the ordinance for your consideration so sure what you have in front of you is, is just uh, some ordinance amendments uh, and to highlight the first uh, change is really in the fee schedule uh, just from fines from uh, ordinance violations or fire code violations and it's not a change in the fine structure because the fee schedule sets the fine structure we're just mirroring the ordinance with the fee schedule so there's no conflict there uh, the other major change is giving the fire department the authority to, to issue violations for parking in fire lanes, blocking fire hydrants, uh, nuisance fire alarms, that kind of thing. Currently, the ordinance only allows the police department to make those violations, so changing that to allow the fire code, violation, fire code official to make those violations as well. Uh, the other uh, major uh, change is basically just some um, clarification on what blocking a fire lane and fire hydrant means. Uh, we took the definition straight out of general statute. Um, we also sent it to the attorney. He looked through it and had no issues with those sections. Uh, but the commercial burning ban was not put in this ordinance because you guys wanted to table it and talk about it later. So I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Anybody got any questions? Thank you, Chief. Appreciate it. Do I have a motion? <laughs> I make, make the motion, motion we approve it. Okay. Teresa made the motion. I'll second it. And Don seconds. All in favor, raise your hand. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Okay. Now we're to the council forum, and we're going to start with council lady, Miss Teresa Betts. Um, thank you all for coming tonight. Um, daylight saving time begins Saturday, and I'm excited. Um, we had a huge turnout at the expo this past weekend. Um, our police department, fire department, parks and rec, just about all our departments here at Town Hall um, worked to make that a successful event. Huge turnout. Um, with spring coming, there are several community activities that will also come. Um, the American Suicide Prevention Walk is March 22nd. Um, the Real Housewives Breast Cancer Bike Ride will be in April. We got the Mountains to the Sea Trail that will be held here in Surf City the last weekend in March, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. They will be here. Um, <coughs> it's been um, very nice the last month getting to know Kyle. 
and he's kept us all very well informed and gives us updates on a regular basis and uh, I just wanted to thank him for doing so. And then another great um, award that we've been uh, nominated for is the Moby Award for um, our bridge. And so it is my understanding that um, on April, I think it's April the 1st, we will go to Raleigh and hopefully win. So that's exciting for Surf City and I'm just glad to be a part of it and glad y'all are too. That it? I think so. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, Mayor Pro Tem, Buddy Fowler. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I also would like to thank you, all of those that came. And Ms. Uh, Sandlin, thank you for your comments on the four things. We'll certainly look into that. I uh, thank you for making them to our attention. Uh, <clears throat> glad to see everyone that's here. Uh, I've been under the weather a little bit for the last three weeks, but I think I'm back out in the woods now. Uh, and I'd like to thank our town manager uh, for the job that he's done so far and, and the town staff in moving us forward with all the projects we've got on the table and going. And it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle and they're doing a, mas a masterful job fitting all the pieces together and keeping them moving. I want to publicly acknowledge all the work that they've been doing and I thank them for it. Other than that, I'm through. You through? You short-winded tonight. <laughs> Councilman Dwight Torrey. So I'd like to thank everyone that's out here for coming out this evening and sharing your opinions and your thoughts and staying abreast to the town's matters because they're important and we see a lot of fami familiar faces. So it's good to see that. Kathleen, is she still here? Oh, I'm sorry. So the Adopt a Beach Access project is not a town project. That's a, a private um, I guess project that's intended to augment what the city does for those accesses. But Andrea Carter is leading that effort. Surely I don't think you're walking the entire beach because there are people out there doing what they've signed on to do. But if you have a specific area that you want to communicate to me with, I could carry that forward to Andrea. And if you want to leave your email, I'll make sure that you get what the rules are for that. I'll be happy to do that. But it's something that I think is working pretty well for us. Uh, the last thing is uh, we obviously thank all the employees of the town for doing what they do every day to make the town better. But today, I'd like to specifically highlight the work that's being done by the police department, most recently with the arrest uh, by the uh, corporal's last name doesn't come to mind, but he, he's done a phenomenal job with his canine, CADA, and they've arrested Three gentlemen, I don't know if you want to call them that, but three uh, individuals who were charged with possession of, of drugs in particular, with heroin being such a problem, 331 bags, I think it was, or bundles, as described. So I want to thank you and your efforts for keeping our town as safe as you can. Uh, lastly, I would just thank you know, my colleagues for doing what they do at, in their liaison positions because I know the hard work it is to do this job and, and the time it takes. So I, I thank you all also for doing your part. And that's all I have. Have a good night. All right. Councilman Jeremy Sugar. Thank you, thank you Mr. Mayor. Um, we had uh, a retreat last month. I'm sure the mayor may uh, do some highlights on it. One of the things we did was the mayor and the council and uh, the manager. I uh, got together with the uh, Cape Fear uh, Council on Governments and they kind of orchestrated and facilitated the meeting and it was a fantastic uh, four hours together. We got a chance to spend uh, talking about an, uh, our agenda, talking about helping what you guys want us to do in the, in the community, what we need to do. Um, one of the things that I want to do is I'm going to start spending a lot more time in this moment uh, as the liaison to different, uh, like he, uh, Councilman Torres talked about, giving you some updates. For example, I'm the liaison to the Beautification Committee that just appointed me to that. Um, they're currently in discussion and changing that name to City Enhancement, City Enrichment right now. There's a great group of people on that. Uh, they're also talking about possibly adding another member so they have an odd amount and to give them some new directive besides just beautification. Uh, best looking home, best looking business. They, they want to do some other things I think is great. I'm um, also the liaison of the chamber. Chuck Strickland was the president of the chamber. For those of you who know Chuck, he stepped down. And Allison Turnage from Isla Spa here is now the, uh, is now the current uh, chamber president. Um, they have a casino night on the 14th at Ocean's Edge up in um, St. Regis and they're hoping to get, they're looking at a new director. I think that's important for us to know. We do fund them 
from a city, all, one of our, well, the four cities do put some uh, resources in there. Um, and I think it's well, well worth it. In fact, they could use more and there's some things I'll talk about next meeting a little bit. Also, there's something called the Greater Topsail Community Alliance, which I know the mayor helped me approve that, uh, which it is, it is, we're also getting that started back up again. Um, so what it is, it's a council person from each city, the town manager and a clerk. We meet more about economic development for the communities. Uh, we took a break last summer prior to the election just to keep things uh, even keel and we're getting started back up with our meeting this month. Uh, so we're going to be talking about what the four cities. I know we have a four town meeting that does not interfere with that. This is just so we can get down to the nitty gritty and talk about economic development. So and then um, uh, last thing is uh, and everybody's shouting out. I made a mention about the police department last last month. Uh, Chief Wilson. Great job. Uh, I want to say great job. I worked hard on that ordinance. Nothing makes me madder than somebody parked in front of a fire hydrant. So uh, anyway, I just want to say great job with you all. So thank you very much. Is that it? Yep. All righty. Thank you, Jeremy. Okay, Councilman Don Helms. I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. I also want to thank uh, the town manager and the rest of the employees in the town for the job they do and the job they have been doing. Uh, I hope everyone voted today. Uh, that your constitutional right is to vote and you should take advantage of it. The fire department's been busy with calls and training. They stay busy all the time. Uh, I want to bring up this sand hauling. Please, folks, the one I, ones of you that live on the north, be patient. These trucks, and be careful with these big trucks hauling this sand but just be patient. We're trying to get it done as fast as we possibly can. Uh, and those folks driving that truck, we don't need uh, dogs and kids turned loose out there because it's hard for them to see some of them sometime. And I don't want anybody hurt, even an animal hurt out there. Uh, the, and to bring that up, there is a, a handicap crossover across from the fire department and they do have don't we have where they move those chairs to chief the welcome, the welcome center they have uh those chairs for the handicap uh and be careful where you go and please wash your hands we don't need any problems with this virus that's all i got that's all you got that's all i got okay well, I think they covered most of it, and uh, but as Jeremy was talking about our workshop uh, with Kyle when he brought us in, carried us into that workshop, uh, I think that really that really helps because it gives us a chance to understand how each one of us are looking at things that we know that we're gonna have to do in the fu future the near future and uh, in the next 20 years. So uh, we have been working on that and I know we're gonna have several more workshops to uh, cover a lot of that. Uh, he brought a gentleman in from COG to sort of help direct us, which is council of government, but brought a gentleman in from COG to sort of help direct us along the lines on that as well. Uh, I know I have thought about that Pender Crossing uh, right much because there is a lot of traffic there with the houses in the back, but also with that motel there. Uh, maybe we can get on DOT and uh, I think we can maybe get one put in there. Uh, and uh, let's see, what else have I got? Uh, like I say, all the events that we got coming up, Hope you participate in those. Uh, looking forward to all that stuff. So our summer is getting started. Uh, January sort of seemed like it sort of drugged through. And I think we almost skipped over February. I don't know how we went from January to March, but it seemed like February just got skipped over. But anyway, I also like to thank the chief for what he did. One thing I think, and I still get a text right along too about the, the dump trucks. But honestly, I follow a lot of those dump trucks. And 
I've never gotten a, a behind one that was doing over 40. Uh, most of them are pretty well following the speed limit, and uh, I think he pretty well told them. In fact, I guess y'all saw that sign he put up, didn't he? <laughs> that named up trucks. Uh, but anyway, he he has pretty much stayed on them, so he's pretty much keeping the uh, dump trucks, which, you know, when you, a lot of times when you got that many dump trucks going back and forth, it seems like there is a lot of traffic there, and they, so they are doing a lot. But what do we got, about 5,000 trucks to come through here, and that's about what the, the, it's going to take to do it, I think, somewhere like that. That's a lot of trucks, so anyway. But like, a, like he was saying, watch out for the trucks because they can't stop as quick as a car can. So make sure you don't pull out in front of them. But anyway, other than that, I just appreciate each and every one of you coming. And if we don't have anything else, I'm going to turn it over to the attorney at this time. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. I uh, have a, a few items. One, uh, on the coronavirus, the School of Government has recently put out two very good articles. The first was on February 26th, and the second one was just yesterday. I don't know how many of you get those publications, but I'm sure either myself, Stephanie, or Kyle can get those to you. I, I found them to be very informative, but certainly not trying to create any hysteria at the same time. Um, secondly, to uh, follow up with uh, Mr. Brewer's uh, statements about the Memorandum of Understanding with Holly Ridge, I think that ultimately is going to materialize into a interlocal agreement. Uh, Kyle and I talked at length the other day about insurance coverage, and we want to make sure uh, all the uh, participating agencies have the appropriate coverage to protect not only the participants, but the town. So we'll be looking at that as we move forward. Um, uh, with respect to the cones and everything, everybody saw down here, Waterside uh, and J.H. Batts intersection, I want to commend Kyle for jumping on that immediately today. And Kyle, I don't know if you've seen it, but we've already received an email um, from one of the parties uh, involved. So we're being as proactive, uh, Kyle's been as proactive as one could want. So thank you for that. Um, following up on the federal project, I was disappointed that the Friday meeting was canceled however the reason they canceled it was in large part to get the easement lines right and that is going to be imperative to get them right the first time if we undertake obtaining um, what was it around 200 easements they said um, and the lines are wrong we're going to have to go back to the drawing board so we don't want to retard that progress so i'll wait as long as we get it right at the end um, I, last Thursday evening, I was, had the honor of being a, invited to be a guest lecturer at UNCW. I just thought the town would like to know, uh, it was for a graduate class on coastal policy, and one of the topics we discussed was the federal project, so Surf City was front and center on that. And then I, uh, the best news I have is um, we were scheduled to go to trial in a personal injury lawsuit, or excuse me, property damage lawsuit filed by uh, a non-town resident. I inherited that case from my predecessor. I was able to get it dismissed yesterday morning, so uh, th as of now, unless he appeals, the case is over and the town has no liability. But I want to take this opportunity to acknowledge uh, Officer Mike, is it Haddock? Hackett? Uh, Phenomenal uh, officer. He helped me tremendously getting ready because this was not my case and I had to get the backdrop. But this is not only a thank you to him, but also to the chief and your department as a whole. He had a 56 minute body cam uh, video and audio. And I was very impressed with the way he uh, handled himself and interacted with the public. Uh, he was an ambassador for, for, the, for the, the town. Uh, he should be commended, chief. I also want to thank uh, Lieutenant Phil Voorhees for assisting in that effort and, of course, Chief Shanahan. And with that, that's uh, my report for this month. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any, anybody have anything else? Okay. Since he mentioned that body cam, uh, the chief brought those body cams in, and I thought it was a good idea from the start, and it has proved to be a great idea uh, it very it very often helps protect our policemen and our town 
from uh, different liability, and also it protects the uh, citizens. So uh, I think it'll, you know, if they if the policeman knows he's being video, he's he's going to be pretty careful too. So I think it works both ways. But I really appreciate the video cams. Okay, if nothing else, do I have a motion? Motion to adjourn. Okay. I've got a first and a second, so we are adjourned. Thank you.